Hello everyone, I hope you've had a great day so far and that you're doing well. For this video we'll be going through an unboxing and review of the Voyager class Predacon Inferno, not to be confused with the Autobot Inferno, and Inferno is from the Transformers Legacy line, as well as originating from Beast Wars back in the 90s. And this particular figure was released by Hasbro and Takara Tommy uh, during the tail end of 2022. Which is still this particular calendar year, at least for about another... Ooh, 30 odd days, give or take. Anyway, uh, keeping up with my progressive accumulation of the modernised takes of the Season 1 Predacons as well as popping back into Transformers Legacy, here is Inferno. And in fact, Inferno's only just uh, come out very recently, so makes a bit of sense to jump onto this while it's relatively new. So, front of the box of Inferno, uh, so we have a nice CGI shot of his beast mode. Um, not too sure if I'm convinced about his weapon being on his beast mode, but, hey, it's becoming a thing. I, I much prefer his weapon being in his back. But anyway, semantics aside. So, shot of Inferno inside his box, in his robot mode. The detailing on his head alone looks like it will be worth the price of admission. So that's really cool. Um, but we will obviously see a bit more when we open up the box. Uh, side of the box we have uh, a quick upper body shot of Inferno followed by more of a full body shot sporting his very strong red colour then other side of the box we're getting quite used to seeing the Decepticon side of the legacy artwork turns the back shot of Inferno in his robot mode and his beast mode. Once again with his weapon on him. I'm hoping it actually does store into his back bit because that will be much better. Uh, but we'll see how that goes. 26 steps of conversion. So it's not too bad. Hopefully it won't be too difficult. Well, it won't be difficult, difficult, but we'll see how intuitive some of this is. I suspect will probably be a lot better than uh, his original release back in the 90s. Not that the toy was bad, um, it had its ups and downs, which I suspect this one may yet have. But now that we've had a look at the box, I'll open up the box and then we can have a better look at the inclusions. And with Inferno now out of the packaging, so we have a very nice looking Inferno uh, in his robot mode. I have tried to put his little back skirting, whatever it's called, into a nice position, but um, I might just fold it down later on for the purposes of just having him laying down. Um, but yeah, Inferno looks pretty darn good. With the exception of his hands, but We'll get to that later on. So that's the Inferno figure that will be included. I'm just going to cast him to the side. His main weapon slash accessory, which hopefully will be a touch on the multi-purpose side. And then we have his manual. So in terms of his manual, so there's the front of it. Let's see what we have here. So, um, first few steps we have just how to open up his um, I don't want to call it backpack because it's not really his back um, but his rear thruster tail bit section so we have a few steps on that which is cool and it does look like it actually suggests that some of his Ant legs also need to move downward, which I think are still currently upward at the moment. Uh, as well as the weapon being able to insert into the back of it, which is very inferno. As well as him being able to hold it. 
a shame he doesn't have his original flamethrower, but uh, oh well, can't win them all. And then going through the first 12 steps of his robot conversion, so it looks like a lot of his upper body will tuck away into his ant head um, and things like that. So it's actually not too bad looking onto the back. So yeah, so his ant legs seem to be a bit on their own. I do see some tabbing things in there as well, which should help. And then tail end of his transformation will start looking at his legs, which look like they will unfortunately reside inside his abdomen. Things will tab in nicely, which is good, but uh, yeah, that's unfortunate. But, um, but then at the same time, his weapon doesn't need to be in there, but it would have been a nice convenience to have it in there. Um, and there you go, 26 steps to convert him into his beast mode, and it does re-emphasize his weapon can attach to his, I believe that is his thorax, um, in his beast mode. So it doesn't look like it'll actually go into the back of his um, abdomen, which is unfortunate. Nonetheless, that was the manual. So, in terms of his weapon, so it's actually not too bad. It's a bit of a stylized take on his weapon from the animated series. Uh, unfortunately, it doesn't have his little flamethrower bit as well, which his original toy was actually quite good at having. Uh, but still, it is very cool. It is a bit multi-purpose because it is also trying to be his um, rear little thruster components. So, I guess if we take his accessory, um, let me just see if I can do this properly. I think they said his back legs need to go like that, or something along those lines. I feel he's going to have a bit of that waspinator syndrome where he has um, his insect legs unfortunately just hanging around. Uh, to this day I think Black Arachne has probably been the best in terms of being able to tuck in some of the insect legs. Anyway, uh, weapon going into hand quite nicely. So that's how it looks. Not too bad at all. Still a bit dubious about the hand, but that's okay. I feel it could have been a bit longer with the fingers, but anyway. So that was the hand version. Now if I was to open up the... Which I actually have you know, tapped some of them in, since he didn't always have this open. So that opens up his nice little posterior, I dare say. And then this should just attach in like that. Now I don't know if I've got it upside down or not. I may do. Um, but either way, that is basically attaching his thruster. And I do remember the original toy, you could actually rotate this uh, bit with a little push mechanism. And that's very cool. It's still nice that they've still managed to keep some of these gimmicks alive in these modern takes. So that's the deployment of his weapon in his robot mode, whether it's being handheld or in his thruster component to be used as a bit of thruster. In terms of Inferno, I think some of the kibbling is going to be a bit of an interesting thing, but we will make do. We'll try to make do. Maybe I'll close his backside a little bit. Okay. So Inferno, so here we have the front of Inferno, the side of Inferno, and yes I have closed up the bit just to make it a bit easier to hold, uh, the rear of Inferno, they have done a really nice job on texturing and colouring uh, his external beast mode, but we'll get to more of that later on. Also notice he does have one of these clear little red plastic bits, so if he was to have some direct light pointed through, his eyes, I'm sure, will have a nice red glow. Uh, the other side of Inferno. Uh, Inferno from a bit of a side angle. Top down. Not too bad. Bottom up. 
or Inferno stand on his own two feet? Yes, yes it will. And that's without too much manipulation of his uh, body to accommodate. Now, his insect legs will probably get to me at some point in time, but that's okay. We will make do. Now before I get too carried away, just looking a bit of a close-up on Inferno's head and his torso. As I mentioned, the texture on the surfaces that would present in the beast mode are really, really good. I've noticed it obviously on Black Arachnia, Tarantulas and Waspinator. Uh, Inferno is definitely a good continuation of that. And I've also just spotted his Predacon logo on his shoulder as well. In fact, everyone likes to have it on their shoulder. And uh, there is a nice shot of his head. Very, very nice. Very detailed. It's a shame that his mouth doesn't open. That would have been a nice little extra gimmick. There's uh, a nice little token gesture, but uh, oh well. That is still very cool. Okay. So I've had a look at Inferno. Uh, in terms of his colours, so he's still a primary red figure. Uh, with a little bit of black. So this is painted black. This isn't his actual limbs. Um, black on some of his antenna legs and his hands. He does have, I dare say, it feels like a bit of a purple on his arms as well as his um, lower body and then some of this metallic blue of sorts just uh, splashed all over his body. So it's a very nice um, colour palette on Inferno and I do feel quite true to form. So We've looked at colours, we've had a look at Inferno as a bit of a faux 360 articulation. So starting with his head, his head will do a full 360, which is cool. It will look up, it will look down a little bit, which is very nice. So uh, Inferno will have no problems whatsoever doing things with his head. And in fact, Beast Wars being Beast Wars is probably one of the few times where you can get away with a 360 of a head. I'm pretty sure... Oh, look at that! How cool is that? That is the price of admission right there. Oh, that is brilliant. That is absolutely brilliant. I love that. Oh, see? That... Oh. That's just amazing. They need to do things like this more often. Granted, it's very select, but oh, that's great. That is great. Um, so yes, his actual mouth will open and close. That is great. So yes, Inferno will have some very nice ability just to have some really good posings with his head alone. I'm sure his head is also detachable, like it has been detached many a times in the show. Uh, but I'm not going to detach it on the camera. So yes, there you go. That's a wonderful bonus gimmick that his head will actually do that. That is awesome. Okay, so that is the head now looked at. In terms of the arms, so his arm will go all the way out like that. Um, you can do a 360 at the shoulder. Bear in mind his ant legs will protrude a bit so potential of colliding with something on the body so just keep that in mind um, but yes the arm can pretty much do anything because of that ability to do a 360 there um, the upper let's see if I can actually so the upper arm will have a 360 there as well thanks to that join in there now these legs do actually move a bit so probably a bit better than those on Moss Banana, so you can actually move them to try and minimize some of the uh, impact with various parts of his body and other limbs. Uh, he has a multi elbow joint, so he'll have a elbow join at the very top of his arm, but you'll also have a elbow bend at the top of his forearm as well. So. Um, very nice. 
but can he? I was trying to see if he could do a salute, but I guess... Uh... Yeah, kinda, kinda, yeah. He could be quite articulated at this rate. So there you go. Um, so that was the elbow, got carried away. His hand will also do a nice 360 as well. That is really cool. So he does have a good amount of movement there. Um, the ant leg will move, but uh, it's probably a trivial thing in his robot mode. So let's see if I can just restore everything back into normal. So that was his um, arms. In terms of his body, let's see if he can do anything. Does he have any rotation? He will not have any rotation at the waist, unfortunately, so he will have to find alternative ways to uh, spin him around, so he'll probably be dependent on his legs. Um, no real crunch either, so that's unfortunate, but it does happen. Um, before we get too carried away, I will mention, in terms of back kibbling, in fact, what we'll do is we'll take out his weapon. In terms of back kibble, it's not too bad. I mean, back back wise, there's no kibble. He's probably similar to Waspinator, and probably similar to Tarantulas and really any of the insectoid protocons. Um, his kibbling is more in the way that it's uh, the insectoid legs being the size that they are just getting in the way his little tail section could be in a way considered kibbling but it is a natural part of him so it's definitely not a major issue so we've looked at his head his arms his torso which has unfortunately no real movement there um, his antennas will move up and down but that's not really much to worry about in his robot mode um, there will be some movement here in these legs, but once again, that's not so much a thing for his robot mode. Um, we have had a quick look at his back bit, so we do know this will fully open out, and it can actually spin as well, but you will have to spin it yourself manually. It's not like the original toy that had a button on the side, that if you press down multiple times, it would spin it around for you. Very cool gimmick that was, by the way. Um, and yes, that will also tuck away quite nicely depending on what you're doing with it in the back. And it does look like you can move this up and down accordingly depending what you want to do. So, in terms of his legs, and I will uh, move his ant legs to the back. Can he do the full splits? Yes, he can. In terms of what else his legs can do, so just move these up as well. So they can go all the way to the front. Um, they can almost go all the way to the back. Well, I think they actually can, but it will start colliding with things. So it's not a full to the back, but it's pretty close. Uh, there will be full rotation up here at the very upper leg as well. So that's very cool. So we can obviously do that. We know we can do that. We've covered that. In terms of the knee bend, so unlike the elbows, it's just the single knee bend there. So that's the knee bend to the back. If we raise his leg up, that's pretty much what it would look like if his leg was standing up. And then just restoring the leg outright. So that's not too bad. Um, bottom piece is all solid. In terms of his feet, it will... It has a little bit of side to side, but it's very minimal to the point that you actually have to pop out his foot a little bit to be able to do it. Otherwise, it actually just nests in quite nicely like that. So. I wouldn't rely too much on his feet um, doing too much side to side. Otherwise, there's no real other motion there. Oh, 
I guess you do have that, but you're starting to untransform his foot. Now, I know I mentioned it earlier, so these uh, black legs, they're pretty much, they're painted on like that. I know in the old days, I believe they actually were part of his beast mode legs. So, that's a nice little rundown of the articulation for Inferno. And yes, I am pretty much just digging the head. So now that we've had a look at all of that, what I will now do is I will attempt the 26 step transformation to his ant mode. And then we can have a look at that and I will have some final thoughts on Inferno. And with Inferno now in his beast mode. Now the transformation actually wasn't too bad. Um, granted, this is the usual, my very first transformation with no real prior knowledge or understanding and just going through sequentially in the manual. So that wasn't too bad. Some of it was quite intuitive. There's some very nice tabbing uh, mechanisms in there as well, which worked out really well. And uh, I'm also surprised he can stand on his own two feet without any problem whatsoever, which is a huge improvement from his original toy. Um, so before we get too involved, yes, we will do the whole sticking his giant weapon on his back. Because why not? All ants have giant weapons sticking off their back. It's probably the most controversial part of the entire beast mode but I know why they do it but it does look quite weird um, there is definitely no space in his abdomen to attach this at all unfortunately but uh, that's basically what he looks like if he mounts his weapon so in terms of Inferno uh, yes we've covered that he can indeed stand on his own six legs um, front of Inferno top of Inferno well, top of Inferno. If I don't press down on his mandibles. It's got some decent length to it. Uh, the side of Inferno. The back. Other side. The bottom. Which actually isn't too bad. I think I've probably moved a few things around a bit much there, but uh, yeah, it's definitely not too bad. Yeah, you can see the um, legs pretty much encompass going into the back of the abdomen so there's definitely no space for his weapon unfortunately. Um, and a bit of a side shot of his very interesting looking interface. So in terms of articulation his legs will have articulation so his front legs so they're all independent legs so his front legs have this little swivel joint so they can move up and down accordingly. Um, it's probably more of a thing for us a robot mode to help tuck them away, but it does move in his um, beast mode. So you can do that with both legs independently. His second set of legs are on this little rotation bit inside. So that's where it meets, well, it's basically his wrist joint. So they can move front and back. Now because his hand also forms part of the tabbing in there as well, so does his upper arms. That does actually feel relatively secure as well, which is good. As for his back legs, so his very hind legs, there's a bit of a nice little ball socket there. So the legs can move up and down. You can move the legs a bit more. In fact, I wonder if that's supposed to tab in there a bit nicely. Um, up here as well, if you want. In fact, is it supposed to do that? I don't know if it's supposed to make a nice little clicking noise or not. Feels like it should do, but um, yeah, there you go. It looks a bit neater that way. Does he still stand? Yeah. Um, yes. And I think, yeah, and his beast mode is still just off the ground, off the back as well. So that's um, his legs looked at. So there's some nice little bits of movement in there if you want to 
make some semi-dynamic poses via his ant legs. We did see his little antennae move as well, which is a nice little gimmick. That's very cool. So they move independently of each other, so you can have them whatever way you wish. His large mandibles also move quite significantly. So you can move them all the way out that way and all the way in. So they do make a nice little pincer type look, similar to uh, those mandibles on Waspinator. Uh, the inside one doesn't move. His head also will move as well. So the ant head can move, uh, look down a bit, can also move up a bit, uh, mainly because you can probably sneak a peek that that is also the head joint for Inferno. But there's also a nice little connection piece underneath here as well that can help facilitate some of that. You won't be able to go all the way down because you will start trying to shear off his head. If it wasn't attached you could probably move further down but um, yeah that's uh, not too bad. So even the head has a little bit of a uh, articulation to work with as well. Um, as for the rest of the beast mode, everything else is pretty much tabbed in securely, so there definitely won't be much movement here. I mean, there's a little... Yeah, actually, I take that back. There's no real... No real intended movement uh, in the back bit, so that's pretty okay. And everything does actually tab in quite nicely there. And going back to my comment about the textures and the colours, in terms of his beast mode, the textures on it do look really, really good. Plus the colour, I mean, especially his uh, thorax here as well. So that is Inferno in his beast mode. Now, final thoughts. We'll take um, this. Um, the head alone. 10 out of 10, if you want to grab Inferno for his actual head, do it. That is amazing. I was not expecting the actual head to move open. Um, especially given that I don't think the manual... The manual itself doesn't suggest that it actually does, so... Yes, my shock horror, I dare say, when I found out it moved was very legitimate. So that is a very cool gimmick alone. The weapon is cool, the fact that he can still hold it and have it attached into his back thrusters is really good. Um, they didn't recreate all his weapons from the original Beast Wars, which is fair enough because this is... Well, actually, this is Legacy. It's not War for Cybertron, so they could have. Um, but they've only elected for the one. Um, the paint apps look great. The articulation's actually quite good for a Voyager class. I think my only real grievance, and it just comes back down to insectoid bodies, the insect legs, for their size, can be a little bit kibbly. But it's an insect, I think you pretty much have to take it in hand that it will unfortunately happen. But his robot mode, I would say, is a very nice modernised take on his original Beast Wars Incarnation. It's definitely a huge step up from his original toy from the 90s as well. Not to say that it's perfect. There's a few things that his 90s toy um, did quite well as well that I wouldn't have expected to translate over. But robot mode, really good. I quite enjoy it. As for his beast mode, well, it's unfortunate this does not tuck in nicely. So, uh, Waspinator, Tarantulus, Black Arachnia. Well, maybe more Tarantulus and Waspinator. Waspinator is a perfect example uh, where they can basically stealth, well, stealthily? Is that even a word? It is now. Um, put these in their beast mode. Poor Inferno, unfortunately, because of where his legs are, cannot. And it does look a bit weird to have a ant with a giant multi barrel weapon uh, protruding off his back. Grinded is a transformer, it's not a problem, but um, aesthetically it, it looks a little weird. But uh, that's probably my one grievance there. The rest of his beast mode, like I've said with his robot mode, a 
huge step up from his original figure from the 90s. He can actually stand on his own six feet. Yes, the original one could, but you had to fiddle. If I remember correctly, part of one of his ant legs was also the pre-painted back legs on his legs, so they detached back out and all sorts of nonsense. Um, the colours in his beast mode are equally as good as they were in his robot mode. The texturing is great. Um, and some of these added little details, well, details slash gimmicks, with uh, the antenna being able to move, the movement in his mandibles, and the fact that each of his legs have independent movement as well is really cool. So, granted he won't be doing a huge array of articulated poses in his beast mode, but the fact that you have some playability there is really cool. Uh, and plus another added bonus is he can also support his weight. I think that's a huge thing given that a lot of the original Beast Wars figures You would have to spend time to be able to do it. They could pull it off, but um, It took a bit of perseverance whereas these modern takes can do it uh, Very well without having to spend half an hour so that's my thoughts on his beast mode. Overall, I would say Inferno is a very, 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 very strong must-grab. Um, the few criticisms that I have, they're next to nothing compared to um, a lot of the value his robot mode and his beast mode have. The playability, the articulation, the look and feel. Um, yeah, overall, as a Voyager, they've done really well at uh, modernizing Inferno. It will definitely be one of those toys if they ever do additional um, weapon packs or things like that, I would ponder it, uh, especially if they provide a extra weapon for him. But we'll see, we'll see. He's only just recently come out. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much my thought with that. So yes, overall, Inferno, I would say Inferno alone is a very strong grab um, when you factor in Beast Wars, the Protocon side of things. Yeah, he's definitely a very solid figure into the lineup. And in terms of Voyager Protocons, given that I've only got the one so far, he's definitely up there as the best Voyager Protocon. Um, I think Tarantula still sits up there as the best deluxe Predacon to date. I know I haven't opened up all of them. I know Scorponok is still outstanding, uh, Pterosaur is still outstanding, and Megatron is still outstanding. But assuming Inferno is the only Voyager, um, yeah, he's got the mantle well and truly made. So yes, if you were dubious about Inferno, be less dubious. I would very much recommend him as a solid grab. So that brings us to an end of the unboxing and review of the Voyager class Predacon Inferno. Definitely been a very fun unboxing and review, and I'm hoping it's actually been informative for anyone who is watching. Um, like I do with previous unboxings and reviews, there will be some parallel shorts of Inferno, uh, one standalone, as well as a very, well, not difficult, but a increasingly challenging uh, group shot with the other three Predacons that I have as well. So that'll bump up to a four Predacon shot. Um, which will be Inferno, Tarantulas, Black Arachnia, and Waspinator. And as I mentioned, there's still Scorponop, Pterosaur, and Megatron to go to basically complete the Season 1 Predacon Beast Wars lineup. Thank you very much for watching this unboxing and review video. Feel free to leave a like, comment, subscribe if you enjoyed the content. All of this does help support the channel. And I do greatly appreciate it. Extra content can also be found on my Instagram account, link below, and as I mentioned, the shorts and probably a quick posting in the YouTube community tab once everything has been published. 
don't know who will be the next week video might stay in the legacy line for some of the more recent releases i'm contemplating armada starscream so if anyone has actually stayed watching this video to the very end and does want to see armada starscream feel free to leave it in the comments with that being said stay safe and take care i will catch you all in the next video